Thank you for joining me for yet another unboxing video. And today we have a expansion for Massive Darkness 2, Heavenfall. And they, this is a campaign mode expansion brought to you by Simon, Cool Mini or Not, and Guillotine Games. And every prior Massive Darkness, the infernal hordes flooded our realm and a divine host battled them back often without mortal intervention. Yet in this instance, the angels and their kind battle indiscriminately or even as allies of the infernals. Something is wrong in heaven, and it's up to the light bringers to find out what has gone awry and if possible to correct it. Massive Darkness 2. Massive Darkness 2 is a dungeon crawling board game for one to six players. With no game master and streamlined rules, players take their heroes on a series of quests to defeat the forces of darkness. This Heavenfall expansion introduces a new way to play Massive, two, uh, Massive Darkness 2 campaign mode, which allows players to play a narrative series of connected quests, develop their heroes further than before with five additional levels, and takes them through a journey where they can choose their path to discover what's behind Heaven's corruption. This was released in 2021 by Simon, again it's for ages 14 and up. For more information, go to simon.com com and of course guillotinegames.com as well got your box contents uh again the massive darkness 2 core game is needed to play with this expansion i did not back this on kickstarter but when i saw this and i saw the models i said you know what i'm going to pick it up if, if not just for the models alone because i do have the first kickstarter of massive darkness but i did not back the second one so let's crack this bad boy open and see what kind of goodness we have on inside the box and of course right off that as always you're always going to have your rule book massive darkness to heaven fall rules and quests again you got your chapters your game components what's included in the box your credits for the good people who brought you this game and you have a game overview it says, from the depths of the infernal realm to the heights of heaven, the Mass of Darkness 2 Heavenfall campaign takes players all across the realms of eternal as they pursue the source of the spiritual realm's involvement in the current Mass of Darkness. Only by battling their way through the corrupted hordes can the Lightbringers hope to discover the true source of the darkness. All right, let me talk about this. Uh, introduce a busting town filled with options. Okay, we don't need to know all that stuff. So there's your fluff about the back of the game basic concepts you have your dice you have your skill cards you have your items your item sets you have your enemies of course you have some game tiles included here you have the town you have campaign cards okay different types of cards special effects special skills companion weapon skills town cards and you have tokens and the item cards continuing forward of course you have campaign mode here's your setup gameplay your campaign phase how to set that up you have a quest phase, all that information regarding there, and the town phase. You have achievements, you have quests. You have quest A, which is your first investigation. All investigations are set up exactly the same way. It shows you how to set it up, it tells you what tokens are required, what the quest objectives are, the quest special rules, if you have a side quest, and when you're progressing through it, here's what your rewards are, your experience, your treasure bag, and then where you head for your next quest, you get to choose one. You either get to go to Highway to Hellscape, Quest B, or the Passage, Quest C, depending on which way you want to do it, which portal you've taken. And down here, it tells you the loot tokens that you get one to two. If you have two players, three to four, five to six, it tells you what you get. Again, next quest, Part B, Highway to Hellscape, it's set up identically as the previous one, with all the rules being the same way, telling you what happened. Quest C, the Passage, Quest D, you have the Demon Artifact. Quest E, the Cursed Sword. And again, I don't want to read what it says here for the quest and choosing your destiny. I don't want to give away any spoilers for the game itself. That's why I'm avoiding those gray boxes. You have side quests. You have the Hellish Maze. Again, another one with the setup. You got side quests. You got the Horror Beast. Your quest objective, special rules, all that stuff like that. Had a set of game boards for it. You're releasing Michael. Again, more information and fluff about the campaign and your progression. 
quest one here. It says the soul collector. The soul keys. Hello darkness, my old friend. Heaven's secret door. Quest M, stairway to heaven. And she's climbing a stairway to heaven. You got the Duke, not the Duke of Earl, but you got the Duke of Hell. And in the back here, we have our explaining to you what the different tokens are and more information about how to set up the board and everything that you need to know for this is again for the uh, Duke of Hell scenario. More information about that. So there you have that is your rule book and your quest book right there. Then inside you also have some tokens and game board. So let me open that up off camera because again it's in shrink wrap still and I always cut outside this way we don't cut ourselves. So we've got a lot of stuff here that was shrink wrapped so we'll do a little bit at a time as they say. So we'll start off with our player cards. So you got Ball Berithi. Barith, Baal Barith, so it looks like, uh, there you go, it's one of your characters, tells you all of his stat lines, everything else you need there, flip that over here again, he is the Duke of Hell, the initial side, so you start off on this side and you flip to this when it says you're enraged side, so he's got two sides, he's a little bit ticked off and he's really ticked off on that side, again his special powers which are here, again his power cost, his health is up here, combat, all mobs activate once, mind control, uh, binding pull, nefarious domination, and infernal troops that he summons right down here. When he's ticked off, he's got mind control, darkness advances, blinding pull, nefarious domination. Again, his combat stats are over here. Everything's upgraded. Infer infernal troops. Again, that's the range side. So when you're fighting originally, you're fighting starting on the initial side. That's, that's him. That's one of your characters. Then we have the campaign mode. Uh, you have Corrupted Archangel campaign mode, which is Michael here. Again, he has Justice from Above, Lance Dash, Dark Blessing. Again, he has Darkness and Corruption. And when you flip this over, you have another character here we're called the Reaper, and he's only used in campaign mode. Again, he's got Soul Drain, Time is Ticking, Death is Coming. He's got Combat 2, 30 hit points. Very, very strong character, and he's got Dark Rage. Reaper has X actions on each activation. So he's got up to one, two, three, four, he's got quite a bit of power here, this guy here. All of them seem to be very, very powerful characters. So there you go. So there's your three characters there. You also have a chart here, which says that this is town dashboard. This must be heaven ball. So it says herbalist, gain one health or a mana potion. You've got Inventor, search for one item from any treasure deck, then shuffle the remaining deck. You've got Gambling Alley, draw one treasure from the treasure bag. you got the Blacksmith, so you can get new things. And you got the Tavern, you got the Item Car Star, up to two items per hero, and you have your item exchange. So that's, that's, so that's your town. The town dashboard, there it is right there. Okay. Then we have our tokens. These are our high quality tokens, as always, as Simon always does, nice thick tokens. And they pop right back in, just as you took them out, right there. This is for your Heavenfall. Got some tokens here. Some player boards, levels. Got some crowns, and you've got some, looks like a shield, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Got some X's. And on the back, here we go, your different levels. So you got your levels one through five, and then you have it up to 10. You're talking about very strong, strong characters you got here. In the back, there's things different. You got shadow, poison, you got another shadow, you got plus one, you got ignore all wounds, you got plus one, plus one, and then you have more shield tokens and more crown tokens. Again, they remain the same. All these are different. So maybe those are things you have to search and check on. These three, these two, oh, they appear to be the same. And so it looks like this is reverse. 
from that one. So that one's a little different. Here's your one of your token sheets. And then you have your game boards, which are used. So all the game boards are set up with a 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. And then flip them over, it's gonna say, so 1B, 2B, uh, 2B, 3B, and 4B. Inside, when it's telling you what scenario you're playing, it'll tell you which side of the board you need to use. So let's take a look at these individually. So this is your 1A board. So, legendary and heavenly status board. Light and dark side, very interesting. So that's 1A and let's take a look at 1B. The darkness coming. It looks like a big organ. Broken statues. All kinds of stuff here. All right, that's cool. Put that over there. And we got 2A. What's happening in the heavens? Quite, quite interesting. These boards are very, very interesting. A lot of detail to them. Looks like this is going to be a very challenging scenario. To be, to be honest with you. Okay. Oh, where, where magical weapons are made? Very cool. You're fighting in the heavens while you're going to meet very, very powerful and destructive forces. Yep. Okay. And then you've got level four. This is 4A, and obviously the darkness is coming. Very interesting. And there's your stairway to heaven, I'm assuming. She's buying a stairway to heaven. When she gets there, she knows. All who will oppose. All right. There are your four boards. Okay, we also got our silica gel. Throw that to the side over there. Game dice. Always important. These are, again, custom dice. So you've got... Uh, five identical dice. It's got two shields. It's got one shield, one, three shields, one, and nothing. So it's three, two, three ones, and nothing. And then you have some red weapon dice that appear to all be the same. Yes. So let's see what we got here. You got four swords. You got a sword and a shield. You got a sword, two swords and a shield, three swords, one sword. Four swords. So you got is this, all of them are D6 die. So there you go. So there's all your sides. One sword and shield, two swords and shield, three swords, one sword, one sword, four swords. There you go. And you got three of those that come with it. And a cool little baggie that goes with them. Like any Simon game, you've always got a plethora of cards that are never ending. So let's see what we got here. We got lots and lots of cards in this game. Of course, everything that Simon does, I gotta give them credit. Everything that they do is very, very high quality. So I got no complaints with anything that I've ever purchased from them. Their shipping prices might be a little high, but their, their game quality, the pieces, the figures, everything is always, uh, to me, is always high, high quality. All right. Okay, so this is Paladin. Actually, we have a bunch of cards here that says here. So you got a bunch of different kinds of cards here. You got... So in that first mini deck I've been pulling out here, I'm seeing that there's epic treasure. There's a legendary treasure. More epic treasure. More legendary treasure. Okay. Oop. 
So we'll take a look at those. You got different levels of play here. It says you got you got Berserker. You got a wizard. Ooh, wizard. Again, it's depending on what class you're playing. Different levels of rogue. Yeah. So as your character is increasing their level. So when I look at this, just based on what I'm seeing here, you're not going to be fighting these characters here and playing this game here with a level one character. It's like, there's your paladin, so there's going to be more cards here somewhere. I, I see some more here. All right. Got some more cards here. Give me a second. So this is the second deck. Yep, 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 yep. No. Okay, so we have some more Berserker cards. Sometimes, if you guys don't know that, in uh, sometimes in um, CMON when they're releasing stuff, they put different cards in different decks. Sometimes, you know, they overflow into the other cards because they get so many damn cards in these games. So, okay, so let's we'll start here to show you just some of the cards that we got here. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, but we have what we call your shaman. So it appears it goes seven, six, so we'll put six in front of seven. So as they level up, these are more power spells that they're going to be getting in the level 10. Okay, so this is your shaman. So again, if I see a six and it's the lowest level that they have there for this expansion, don't be coming with a one, two, three, four, five level character. Let's 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 rock and roll. You need you need some strong characters here. So if we flip this card over real quick, we're all set the same. Flame Spirit three, level six spell. Oh, place Flame Spirit three in your zone. Then add two flame to each enemy in your zone. Skill is a shaman. So all these are different spells that they're going to learn. So let's just take a look at some of them. I'm not going to go through them again. Level ten is going to be your highest level. I'll see. Uh, so it says Light Bringer Ascension, one with nature. Level nine, Nature's Revenge two, Volcano, Refreshing Gold, uh, Renewing Flames. Level eight, Nature's Revenge one, Avalanche four, Firestorm four, Healing Wave four, Frost Scout three, and f uh, Flame, oh, f uh, f Frost Spirit three, I'm sorry, and Flame Spirit three, sorry, that blurred out on me while I was looking through the camera. So those are your shaman spells from level six to level 10 that they can get when they are getting up to level. So then again, we got the ranger. We got ranger level seven. Again, six, put the six in front of the seven. You got level nine. You got one level eight, nine, and then level 10. Here's your ranger. Again, the skills will increase at, over time, okay, or over level. So you got lightbringer, uh, ascension level 10 you roll this in light zones you can't use your this effects in light zones instead you may use this draw and discard two arrow cards apply the central effect for both cards to the attack and this is again a level 10 skill for ranger all the cards are set up the same way title what level it is what it does and again it tells you it's a skill for that kind of class of character so you got the light bringer uh, ascension you got the headshot uh, handcrafted arrow two. These are level nine. Windy arrow, double arrow, fire from above. Then you have handcrafted arrow one, piercing arrow four, fire arrow four. This is level four, uh, level seven, uh, arrow volley four, improved uh, strikings three, and then grappling arrow three is a level six. So there's are your approved. Again, more skills for your ranger once they hit level six. Then we have information for our rogue, it appears. Level seven. Well, level six is before seven, so we'll put that there. Then we got nine. We got eight in between. We got nine, and then you got rogue ten. Okay, again, we're starting off at level ten. Again, all these characters it appears that when he hits to level ten, the titles appear to remain the same for level 10. They're Lightbringer Ascension. 
So that's like, I guess you are, you, you, you got to self actualization, I guess, for this in this sense. Level 10, you roll this in light zones. You can't use your blank effects in light zones. Instead, you may use defender minus one sh shield for each discard rogue token. If your zone is light and shadow, both effects trigger. Skill again for the rogue. So all the cards are set up the same way title, level, what it does, and your skill is for what character is the rogue. So again, you have. Uh, you have Dark Evasion, you have Shadow Merge 2, you have Weak oh, weak Spot, Double Strike, Fatal Backstab, uh, Shadow Merge 1, Tailored Swiftness 4, you've got Shadow Form 4, you've got Deadly Mixture 4, um, Re-Released Tricks 3, and you got Toolkit 3, and that's for your Rogue. Then it seems like we have a Berserker also among us. Seven, six, eight, nine. We got two cards for level 10. Again, uh, the Lightbringer Ascension. You got level 10, no stance required, it says. You roll this in light zones. You can't use your this effects in light zones. Instead, you may use this plus this for each this you have. Skill Berserker. Again, all these icons are explained to you in this rulebook or in the core set that you might have. So you have that. You have Rallying Cry. You have Focus Strike 2, Trail of Blood, Retaliation, Blind Tackle. You have Focus Strike 1. You have Playback 4, Charge 4, Fatal Fury 4, Th Soothing 3, and Enraged Fighter 3. Again, this is from level 6 to up to level 10 for Berserkers. Okay, then we have also over here, let's see what we got here. Not sure what these are. No oh, paladins, okay. That's all the paladin skills right there. Okay, we'll come back to that one. And then we have our wizard cards. You have level seven, you have level six, put the six in front of the seven, nine, nine, nine. Not sure why in the card deck they don't they don't put them where they're in order, but you know that's a minor thing. So again, wizard, and this is a skill card. Again, level ten is the highest you can go to. It's the Lightbringer Ascension. It says the skill doesn't go to, on the spell amulet. You roll this die in light zones. If you can't use your this effects in light zones, instead you may use this. Deal three wounds and gain three this. Skill is the wizard again. So you got the Lightbringer Ascension, arcane form. Teleport 2, Biting Cold, Implosion, Lava Burst, Teleport 1, Dark Magic 4, Frost Armor 4, Fire Course 4, Battle Wizard 3, Time Walk 3. That's for your wizard. You also have for your paladin. Now your paladin guards for some reason are a little bit different. Not quite sure why. But you've got your paladin level 10 skill. It says Lightbringer Ascension, level 10. This skill doesn't go in any column. You roll this in light zones. You can't use your this. Effects in light zones. Instead, you may use this. Move each of your cons consecration tokens up two zones. Skills Paladin. All these are also skills as well. But the great thing about the Paladin, it's on both sides. So again, it says Blinding Light, level 10. Weaken Evil, level 9. Weaken Evil 1, level 8. Life Steal, Sacrifice, Hurl. Divine Protection 3, Echoing Hollow, Life Link 4, which is a level 7, Boldness 4, which is a level 7, and Banish 4 is a level 7. Now you flip them over, this is the Blessed side, it says Banished 4. So when it says Blessed, it says 1, uh, you can move up to 2 enemies in this Consecrated Zone by 1 or 2. Move to enemies, take 1 this, the zone is a Shadow Zone. Flip this card back at the end of the round, Skill Paladin, so you got Banished 4, Boldness 4, Life Link 4. These are the blessed side, Echoing Hollow 3, Divine Protection 3, Hurl, Sacrifice, Lifesteal, Weaken Evil 1, Weaken Evil 2, Blinding Lights. And these are all powers for the, as I stated, for the Paladin. Then, of course, when you're fighting big baddies, you can always get yourself lots and lots of epic treasure. So let's take a look at our treasure. What can you get? Again, title, Hellfire set, Defense, it tells you what it takes off. So you got you got uh, Magma Greaves, Magma Greaves, Ignition Helm, 
Shadow Breeze, Doom Helm, Skull Armor, Skull Armor, Iron Armor, Cloak of Shadows. Okay, stuff to up your game to fight against. Again, higher levels, you need more stuff. Then, of course, you have your Epic Treasure. Then you have your Legendary Treasure. Okay, again, red, blue, yellow cards, it looks like. All right, so let's see, take a look here. See, Wizard's Fiery Scroll, Hellfire Set. Wizard only. When resolving on an enemy in the dungeon, use this instead. Attack one this, add one that. And these are the three things that you get. So you get your Wizard's Fiery Scroll. So it tells you right there who can use it. Wizard, Paladin. Shaman, so you have to keep an eye on that. All right, so it's Wizard's Fiery Scroll, Paladin's uh, Searching Mace, uh, Shaman's Flare Amulet, Ranger's Conflagration Bow, Berserker's Magma Sword, Rogue's Fire Blowgun, Blazing Gauntlets, Blazing Gauntlets, Lava Armor. Okay, that's one set. Then you get the Paladin's Dreadful Hammer, you got the Shaman's Twilight Amulet, Ranger's Ghastly Crossbow, You've got Berserker's Dusk's Dusk Axes, Rogue's Gloom Knives, Wizard's Arcane Bracer, Dark Gauntlets, Dark Gauntlets, Sinister Armor. Then you've got Snake Ring. Action, once per turn, target one enemy in line of sight. They attack another enemy. If possible, the attacker doesn't roll blank or trigger abilities. Okay, these are rings. It tells you right there it's a ring. Snake Ring, Mind's Eye Ring, Moon Amulet. Marvelous uh, Spikes, Winged Boots, Elven Crown, Dragon Armor, Sapphire Armor. So there you go. Those are, so you had Epic Treasure. Now you got Legendary tre uh, Treasure. Moving on. We've got more. You asked for it. We got more mini cards. So we've got Campaign cards, mob items, levels 6 and 7, mob items, levels 8 through 9, and then level 10. Again, you're leveling up. Here we go. Oh, and we got some more rogue stuff. We got rogue, shadow merge, hybrid skills, and these are, I'm not sure what these are. So I'm believing these are for the rogue also. So it says here Flame Spirit 3. Attack, Defender takes two damage. All right. Frost Spirit three. Attack, Defender takes that. It says uh, hybrid skills. It says when attacking an enemy using these tokens, apply the shadow poison effect in addition to the combat bonus. Shadow merge. After using the shadow merge token for an action, instead of flipping it to its use side, place it on your hero slot. When you are attacked, you may return this token to the bag to gain defense one. All right. So that is for the rogue. Where's the rogue at? some extra special stuff for the rogue as well so it looks like there's a little bit extra powers for the paladin and for the rogue now we're going to look at the campaign cards that we have right here all the fronts are the same flipping it over to the side so you got the yellow cards again you got the blue cards looks like you got green all different kinds of stuff in here and that's probably indicating who can use these things okay so you have level one two three four five six so. All right, so it's levels one through 30. So these cards, so these are the campaign cards. It goes from card number one all the way up to card 30, as you see it right here. So let's take a look at card number one. I want to start at 30, I want to start card one. So it says here, uh, Guile, the Tavern Keep. So these might be other people. Other heroes in Guile zone gain attack one. So it might be a friendly character that you meet up with. Then you got Redeemed Angel Leader. Then you have Gambling Alley. Oh, this is when you're in the city. Herbalist. So you got your Dark Bringer Presence, a special skill. Hellfire Presence, a special skill. Lightbringer Blessing, special effects. Pendant of Health, again, Maybe these are things you can purchase when you're in the... Oh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I dropped that. It's level 7. So I dropped that card. Sorry about that. 
Then you have the Synergy Enchantment, Portal Manipulation, you have the Hell's Bane Amulet, Cursed Sword Mastery, Monster Slayer, you have Michael's Feather, it's got two, Combat Spend one of these to ignore one die. You have Angelic Armor, you have Hell Rider, Attack one, plus one for each fire on you, special skill. Summoner, it's a, again, attack each roll count as a sword. Half Demon, special skill. Half Demon, special skill. When you roll this, you must also take one wound. You have a Cursed Sword, which you don't want. You've got a Teleport Goggles. That's always good to do. You can move around when you don't want to. The Inventor, search for one item from any treasure deck except Legendary. Then shuffle the remaining deck. Search for one item from the Legendary deck. Then shuffle the remaining deck. Okay. Michael's Blessing. Redeemed Michael. Orb of Souls. Soul Keys. Reaper Scythe. The Angelic Halo. The Profane Sword. And number 30 says the Sacred Sword. This weapon also counts as this and that. Light Attack plus 5. Wow, that's a strong thing right there. So again, that's a level 30. And this is starting back all the way at number one. So that's, these are your campaign cards. Again, this is a campaign mode. Now, during the campaign, you're going up different levels. So you're starting off at six, seven in this campaign. Again, this is no love, not for low level characters. This is for only six, level six through 10 characters. Again, if you're weaker than that, go home because you ain't going to win. You got to amp it up. All right, so this looks like it's different kinds of, maybe, yep, looks like an item deck. Precision bow. So title, picture, it's a hand weapon, first range attack of turn, plus one die, and then you get all that information down there. Again, all this information, all these icons and everything are explained to you in the rule book or in the core box. I'm reading the core box of Massive Darkness 2 in which to play this game. So you got the precision bow, Soul Eater, Fire Chains, Wand of the Dead, Skull Axe, Heavy Hammer, Angelic Blade, Stone Knuckles, Primeval Club. So that's for your level 6 7. Put this over here. And then you have your level. Eight through nine items. Again, Enchanted Precision Bow, Devil's Bow, Angelic Spear, Staff of Mana, Four element, Elements Wand, Skull Scythe, Demon Trident, Enchanted Pike, Skeleton Blade, Skeleton Blade, Skeleton Blade. Let's take a look at this again. The Enchanted Precision Bow, First range attack of turn, you get a plus two on that. So this is, a, again, you can see it's going from plus one to plus two in this deck here. So again, the higher level you need, you need better weapons against stronger creatures. Level 10, here we go. We've got Devil's Fire Bow. Range attack, add one. Shadow attack, plus five. If the target has three fire or more. So you're fighting the devil. All right, Dragon Cross Bow. bow. Heaven's Javelin, Snake Eyes, Staff of Darkness, Ritual Skull, Death Axe, Soul Diffuser, Undead Sword, Tainted Sword, Mortal Sword, and there you have it. Those are your weapons for your level 10. And of course you have two more decks of cards, which of course you need. So cut that as well. So you're going to run into creatures and things that you have to fight all along the way. So let's have some creatures that you're going to have to fight. So here's your level 1, 2, 3, 4, level 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then your roaming monsters for level 10, which are going to be tough to fight. So let's see what our See what our roaming monsters for levels one and two would be. So we've got Uriel. Gives you all information. So it's set up. You've got the stat lines over here. You've got a stat line here. Again, all the icons of this will all be explained to you in the core rulebook or in the Heavenfall rulebook as well. It says here, uh, uh, all other enemies add plus one to defender on attack. 
If there is one or more hero in line of sight, move Uriel to the zone of the furthest hero in line of sight and attack them. Add one fire to each hero in zones of Uriel leaves. Otherwise, add one fire to each hero in the dungeon and move Uriel two zones towards the closest hero. There's his attacks and all that stuff like that. Then you have Archangel Raphael. So you're fighting all kinds of angels in heaven during this Heavenfall campaign. So it looks like that. So there's your level one. Uh, is Arch, uh, level one and two is Archangel Raphael and Uriel. So we'll put that over here. Then we're going to go to level three and four. Again, Uriel and Archangel Raphael. So they're getting stronger as they're fighting them. As they're going up level, again, roaming monsters again. Uriel and Archangel Raphael, they're just getting stronger and stronger as they go along. So they're different level. As you're leveling up, well, here's these guys are leveling up as well. So what do we got here? Uriel, Archangel Raphael, Lydian Incubus Lord, Etheria, Undead Queen, the Ghoul, Andra. So let's take a look at this one here. So again, it's 12. Stat line's 3, 2, 1. All other enemies add plus one fire to defender on attack. If there is one or more hero in line of sight, move Uriel to zoned of the furthest hero in line of sight and attack them. Add one to each hero in zones Uriel leaves. Otherwise, add two to each hero in the dungeons and move Uriel two zones towards the closest hero. Attack, add fire, plus one per fire on the defender. So uh, I'll see Uriel by level six, seven versus his one as level one. It's getting a lot, lot stronger, obviously. Same thing for Archangel Raphael. Yeah, again, Lividian, Incubus Lord, Etheria, Undead Queen, the Ghoul, and Andra are in your level 6 7. As we continue to move up, so if you look at Uriel, the cards, I'll see. 12, 5, 2, 1. You got 3, 2, 1 down here now. Again, here it's 2, 1, 1, 1, where it's just 1, 1. So as you can tell, as he's leveling up, he's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So, now we're talking levels 8 to 9. Again, Uriel again. So here it's 3, 2, 1. Here it's 4, 3, 1. Down there it's 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. It's 3, 1, 1, 1. Okay, yeah, it's another number there. It's 14, 12. Obviously the skills are going to be amped up as well. So here we have Uriel, Archangel Raphael, Lydian Incubus Lord, Etheria Undead Queen, the Ghoul, Andrea, they've all leveled up now too, as well, as the game continues to get harder. And last but not least, you have your level 10 baddies, which I'm going to tell you, they're going to be hard to knock out. So Euro goes from 14 to 16. So he started off, so we go back here real quick, he started off 5, and now he's 16. So I'll see he's getting a lot, lot stronger. So he had a level... 2 1, now it's a 4 4 1. Down there it's a 1 1, now it's a 3 2 1 1. So again, he's really, really amped up. And the other characters are amping up the same way. So you got Uriel again, Archangel Raphael, the Lydian Incubus Lord, Etheria Undead Queen, the Ghoul, and Andra. Those are your roaming monsters that you will face as your levels increase and as your skills increase. Last deck of cards we got right here. So again, for this set here, this expansion here, we got lots and lots of new cards for your Massive Darkness 2 set. So again, you got your mob, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you got your level 10. Back here, let's see what these are. You have your Darkbringer Wizard. Rogue, Berserker, Shaman, Ranger, Paladin, Hellfire, Wizard, Rogue, Berserker, Shaman, Ranger, Paladin. So let's take a look at all these cards here first. So there's less of them. So again, we're talking Wizard. So we're going to see, let's take a look at these two cards and look what the differences are. So you got the Hellfire Wizard, you got the Darkbringer Wizard. Flip them over. You got Minor Power, Greater Power, Darkbringer Shadow. You got Minor Power, Greater Power, Hellfire Flames. Okay, this one here says the Darkbringer Shadow ability may be triggered instead of the hero's regular shadow ability. It's a minor power, two plus set items. Greater power, plus four plus set items. The Darkbringer Shadow ability may be triggered in addition to the hero's regular shadow ability. Darkbringer Shadow. 
Uh, defender, minus one shield per mana you have, I guess that is. So now if you're, so we're comparing the De uh, Darkbringer Wizard versus the Hellfire Wizard. So the Hellfire Wizard. Minor power, two plus set items. Discard two fire from yourself. Rotate the ready marker to the next quadrant once per round. Greater power, four plus set items. Discard two fire from yourself. Rotate and ready marker to the next quadrant and deal three wounds to one enemy within range once per round. Hellfire Flames, two plus set items. Resolve your fire at the end of your turn instead of at the start of your turn. Okay, so you can reload up there. So again, you've got these powers, different powers for your different characters as you go along. I'm not gonna read them all, but then you have the Darkbringer Paladin, you have the Darkbringer Ranger, Shaman, Berserker, Rogue, and Wizard, which are all your classes, which we have right over here. And you get your Hellfire Wizard, Rogue, Berserker, Shaman, Ranger, and Paladin again. Same thing here with their extended powers, depending on the level that they're at. So you get this deck of cards, Back this stuff up just a little bit. Got this deck of cards. You got that deck of cards. It's a little tricky when you have too many sets of cards to show you everything. So again, these are all of your uh, your mob levels, different levels. So let's start at level one. Flip it over. Again, corrupted angels. Key heart one, and tells your stat lines down here. So I'm going to put this down here. I'm just going to reverse them so we can take a look at them from lowest to highest versus highest to lowest. Okay, so let's do it again. All right, we've got here, we've got the Corrupted Angels. That's a level one. Levels one, two. So now we're up to level three, four. Again, the color will tell you the level when it's changing. Okay, all the cards are set up exactly the same stats and your information about them title up top corrupted angel corrupted angel corrupted angel then you have fire entities they have two two combat one add two fire to the attacking or defending hero that's and they have eight strength and that's obviously on a level six seven character you have satyrs you have the undead you have fallen angels you have demons you have infernal imps gargoyles skeletons more corrupted angels, fire entities, satires. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about that. Okay, so again, these are the red. Yeah, so you got the yellow, the orange, the red, uh, the red, the dark red, which is the level six, seven. The lighter red is level five. Then we're rolling on to this is level eight, nine, which is again you have your fire entities. Everything's just basically getting stronger on each of these cards as they are leveling up. As for leveling up policy. Fire entities, satyrs, undead, fallen angels, demons, infernal imps, gargoyles, skeletons, corrupted angels. So from level one, two up to level eight, nine, you're gonna see the difference. From two wounds to eight wounds, the three, two versus the one. Again, defense, the dice are changing. Everything else appears to be the same. But as you can tell, when they get up higher level, they're just starting to amp up and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Okay. And then we've got our level 10. So that was level 9, 8, 9. This is level 10. Fire entities, satyrs, undead, fallen angels, demons, infernal imps, the gargoyle, skeleton, and of course the corrupted angels. So if you look at the, let's do the max comparison, level 1, 2, level 10. Again, it's 9. There's no nothing here. Four, two, and one. And again, the defense. Everything pretty much stays the same, except for their yellow die turns into a red die. So there you go. So that's again your level one cards through your level ten cards. And these are all of your mob levels from one all the way up to ten. And last but not least, we have our figures, which are included in this. Uh, expansion as well. Now before I show you the figures, I'm going to go through here too, just show you the side of the box. There's a really cool artwork, which is depicted on all the cards, but I wanted to show it because it's really, the artwork's really, really pretty 
fantastic. Really, really cool. It's a war in heaven, and these are the baddies you're fighting. Which is really the reason why I picked this up. It looked like a really, really cool concept. So here we go with the characters. We've got four, uh, excuse me, we've got six identical characters that look like this. Detail is fantastic. These, I would believe, are the Corrupted Angels. I'm not quite sure, but I'm, that's what I'm assuming. Okay, these are by far the smallest. So you got six of those. So I'll put him over here. I do have to contact Simon about this because I got this character with no base. So I just got to get a, contact them and get a base that appears to be an error in the game. Or I should say an error that in, in the shipping or packing of this. It came without a base, so I just need to get a base. Worst case scenario, snip these two off, put them on a regular base, and he's good to go. So it's not, no major thing. For those who don't know, that's how Simon puts their base, their characters on their bases. So it makes it nice and click, and they're on the very, very solid. But if you want to rebase them, you just clip that off and put them on a different base. If you want to put them on a clear base or a black base or a wooden base, it's totally up to you. So there we go. We have him. Again, attention to detail is phenomenal on all Simon figures, as you guys know. Fantastic. That's a really cool sculpt as well. And then we have another angel. And that's, this is really why I picked up the this expansion. Again, I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I didn't do any of those things. But I picked it up because these figures to me were really, really fantastic. And whether I use them in a different kind of setting, um, you know, just to paint them up would be pretty fantastic with all the detail on these. these when, they, when Simon releases these giant figures, they always have a tremendous amount of detail. And when you... When you prime them and start painting them, all that stuff just really starts to pop. These are all gorgeous figures. So there you go. There's another one. So that's your good team, shall we say, in a sense. Then we got our baddies. And ladies and gentlemen, that is what you call a spectacular figure. Now again, you got some mold lines here, that's okay. Put some green stuff in there, collect that up, and it goes right away, not a big deal. And then we have this right here. Absolutely stunning figure. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. That's that character here. Last but not least, we have the baddest of the bad. Now, if that doesn't tell you awesomeness. I don't know what does. Again, it's the war in heaven. Looking like hell just about now. This is this is a phenomenal, phenomenal. Again, you can put some green stuff in there. Get rid of that mold line, the dragon, the demon, the chains, all the detail on these figures are just absolutely, absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So that's another figure there. That's, again, absolutely stunning. Again, I just I hit this just a little bit, so I just want to shift over just a little bit for us. And again, if I go through the box again, real quick, let me move him out of the way just so we don't ding him. Let me just move him out of the way for a second. Again, as I said to you before, you get six of those miniature figures. You get six of these guys here. You get six of them. And there's the spaces in the box for all the rest. Again, unfortunately, one of my figures came without a base. I guess you gotta contact him and they'll send me another quick base for him. 
hopefully we'll do that sooner than later. Let me put this back in here. So this is that figure. So we're gonna put him over here. And he is pretty massive compared to the rest. I'll put him on top here actually. Just so you see the different size range of characters. Let's get them all. So there they are. That's so that is everything that's included, and this concludes our unboxing of the expansion for Massive Darkness 2. The expansion is Heavenfall. Uh, Heavenfall. It is a campaign mode expansion for Massive Darkness 2. Of course, you do need Massive Darkness 2 core box set to use this expansion. Brought to you by Simon and Guillotine Games. And it was released in 2021 by Simon and Guillotine Games. As always, thank you so much for joining us for this unboxing video, which is truly appreciated. If you enjoyed the content, you could always give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. You could also hit that subscribe button. This way you're kept up to date as to any time we release new content to the page. As always, thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well, enjoy the remainder of your day, and we'll catch you on the next unboxing video.